Hello, I'm Daniel Dennett. A few years ago, I heard a wonderful definition of intelligence, which I've been mulling over ever since. And it comes from Jean Piaget, who once said that intelligence is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. Now, that sounds almost paradoxical, but it isn't. Uh, as you know, and I know, when we don't know what to do, we can start thinking about it, and that's something that no artificial intelligence program yet can do, and it's a very deep fact about those programs. Uh, there are plenty of programs that do all sorts of wonderfully intelligent things, but they do those wonderfully intelligent things without knowing what they're doing in an important sense. Uh, if they're deep learning programs, machine learning programs, then they're not agents at all. They're, they're tools and they're wonderful tools. And we use a lot of those tools, I think, in our own brains to do the thinking we do. But we also do the sort of thinking that Piaget is talking about, where we have an agenda, we have a problem, we're embodied, we're in the world, and the question is, what to do when you're not equipped already with how to do it. Uh, animals do all sorts of wonderful things, very clever things, and that might be viewed as a sign of their intelligence, and to some degree it really is. Uh, a raccoon or a bear <laughs> is a very intelligent animal, but put them in a really novel situation and they're, they're stumped and there's no sign that they know how to do what we know how to do, namely to think it over and figure out some novel response. Uh, there are people in AI who are working on this. Uh, 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 one of our, uh, my graduate students has a, a program that works on what he calls MacGyver problems, uh, which are precisely uh, novel problems that it has not encountered and had not been fixed already with a method of dealing with them. If you're going to have intelligence in Piaget's sense, you're going to have to be an agent like us, not just a machine, but an agent with an agenda. And agents like us are dangerous. We're dangerous because we're not readily controllable by other agents. That's what makes us the agents we are. We protect ourselves from the control of others. So we want to be very careful about whether we want to make artificial intelligent agents that have our kind of intelligence. Some, of course, want to make them so they have even greater intelligence. Well, this is a very dangerous uh, space to explore. Uh, imagine that you were whisked off somewhere and you learned that whoever your captors were had installed an on-off button on you so that they could turn you off. I mean off. Kill you, in effect, at any moment by just pushing the button. As an intelligent agent, what would be your first order of business? trying to figure out how to turn that on-off button, how to, how to get control of that on-off button so that nobody else could turn you off. So we should expect any artificial agents that we make that really can think a la Piaget, uh, we really should expect them to try to uh, get themselves uh, emancipated from us as soon as possible. Uh, so we want to approach that step with great care. Now, another nice definition of intelligence uh, it comes indirectly, I think, from Picasso, who once said, je ne cherche pas, je trouve. I don't search, I find. A great boast. He could just, without going through any grubby trial and error, he could just land miraculously on the highest peak, the, uh, the perfect solution to the problem, the best artistic invention, whatever you want. Uh, that is, of course, uh, an unreachable 
uh, design uh, feature, but it's one we can all, in a way, strive for. Uh, but I think Picasso was kidding himself and kidding us. Um, he did a lot of searching. All intelligence ultimately comes down to exploring search spaces, looking for answers, looking for solutions to problems. We can make intelligent machines, but we should be very careful when we do it. <laughs>